The human stories coming out of Japan are simply heartbreaking, but for most of us, surviving a tsunami is unimaginable. My next guest, though, has done exactly that. Petra Nemkova went through the 2004 tsunami in Thailand and lived. Out of that experience, she founded the Happy Hearts Fund for Children in Disaster Zones, and Petra joins me now. Petra, thank you very much for coming in. I can only imagine the kind of emotions you've been through in the last few days, reliving the horror of what you went through. For people like most of us who've never been anywhere near a tsunami, what is the experience like when it happens? Um, the experience is just horrifying because you feel so powerless with the amount of power of the water. You feel um, afraid um, what's coming next. You feel worried for your loved ones, pain. Um, and it's just... Um, uh, for me, I never heard the word tsunami, so I was not prepared. I didn't know what to do, um, uh, how to how to save myself and others. Um, and uh, what happened after, when I was in the hospital, more emotions are coming and emotions of frustration because you want to help others. And I was not able to help because my pelvis was broken in four places. And that's one of the reasons why I established Happy Hearts when later on um, to be able to help um, in Thailand and now in nine countries around the world. And we have rebuilt 50 schools since 2006. Um, but when, you, when you saw the gentleman there, yes who clearly was in exactly the same position that you were, caught up in this wall of water, mm. nothing he could do, and he lost his loved one, he doesn't know what happened to her. You lost your fiance, he died that day. You must have related absolutely to what, the agony that he's going through. The agony is um, so hard to imagine, and um, one thing is to not to give up, because, um, um, there are many uh, stories um, of, um, of hope and, and uh, loved ones being found and not to give up, um, but it's very hard to, to go through that uh, situation. I, um, one, uh, one, one of the important things, and it's probably hard to, to, to think about it at these difficult times, but, um, but the there, um, one, one thing we've just seen personally, uh, uh, amongst the disaster, there was so much unconditional love around people being ready to sacrifice their own lives for others, for strangers, and all, a whole world coming together and giving so much love. So that, that's something uh, amazing, very positive. And one thing which, when I look at all the, um, um, all the images and videos, what I see is um, a, a reminder of how connected we are. The, the world is like our body, and when a finger um, is hurt, the rest of the body is influenced, and, and we are influenced here in New York, um, and I just hope that um, there's a lot of support coming uh, for Japan, um, and not just now f for the first response, but for the long run, and the, the importance of sustained response is as crucial as first response. What is the most effective thing that Am Americans can do to help? Yes. Um, on a level uh, of helping children, the best way for them to um, uh, recover and start healing processes, go back to normalcy, to, uh, to go back to school, which is safe, that helps them uh, with the recovery. And the uh, sooner they go there, less of the scars uh, they have. Um, on a, for, for the whole country, I think it's so important to to help now with the first response, but be there six months, one year later, and not to forget, especially after Haiti, Bill Clinton has been stressing the importance of sustained response. And every time when we go to a country of natural disaster, uh, I see the same thing. After a couple of months, the help goes away, um, and, uh, and children and whole communities are forgotten for two, four, six, ten years later. Do you ever get over anything like this? I mean, do you still have nightmares about it now? You, you always will keep it inside, you always will live with it, it will never go away. Um, but one thing I try to focus on, not on the negative of it, but on something, what I can learn from it and how, through my experience, I can help others. 
um, uh, and that's why I'm helping through Happy Hearts one. One of the really important things as well, which we have seen, is the importance of disaster preparedness. Mm. And if something like uh, what happened in Japan would happen in other parts of the world, the big question is, will we be prepared? Uh, uh, and um, do we have um, emergency kits, the emergency plans? And it's something I hope that um, it slowly will be implemented or even fast, in a fast way will be implemented at schools and, um, and in other places. And, and finally, what would your message be to the people of Japan who are suffering so badly at the moment? Um, the message for them will be um, that my my heart is breaking looking at what they are going through. All my love is going to them. And, and as, as hard it is, try to focus on something positive, even if it's 1%, of, um, and um, that will help with the recovery and healing process. And it's very, very hard. Even if, uh, from my personal experience, I, every time when I went down, uh, I said to, I, I was trying to keep positive, and only through keeping positive I, I could recover. And it will be hard. The next few days, next weeks, next months will be very hard. But uh, the fastest way to recover is to try to um, be appreciative of the gifts which we have, seeing sunshine, being able to breathe and air. Um, and uh, I hope that the recovery on a personal level and on a country level will be very fast. Petra, thank you very much for coming in. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up with the